Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel Construction Hub, The Student's Friend. This channel focuses on using video resources to assist your revision. In this video, the required detail and necessary components will be represented and explained using a scaled model, a SOLIDWORKS drawing and assembly, and also through pictures. The SOLIDWORKS assembly will be helpful for you to gain a clearer understanding of the makeup of the roof. Let's first begin by looking at the individual components that make up the roof structure. Looking at this image we can see clearly six of the main components which give the general shape and form of the traditional cut roof. A cavity closer is used to close and seal the cavity walls. This cavity closer also offers a secure surface on which to fix the wall plate to. The wall plate is necessary to allow a secure fixing for the common rafters to rest on. This wall plate helps to ensure the roof rests at the required angle or pitch of the roof. A suitable support is necessary for each common rafter to ensure that they are at the required pitch. At the top of our roof we see the ridge board. The ridge board allows a good surface for securing each common rafter while also ensuring that each rafter will be in line with each other. Let's now take a look of the assembly of these components as far as the ridge board. Load-bearing walls are an essential component for a traditional cut roof. Having load-bearing walls for ceiling joists to rest on ensure that they are supported and can hold the weight of the roof over the area or span of the house. Continuing with the SOLIDWORKS assembly, we see the inclusion of the rafters and the ceiling joists. Let's now focus on how to offer strength and structural support to the individual components of the roof. The first type of structural support which we will look at is the collar. The collar is made from the same size material as the common rafter and runs horizontally across from one rafter to the other. The collar offers structural support to the top section of the roof, preventing the common rafters from buckling in. In these images, the collar is positioned at a height to allow for living accommodation. The next form of structural support which we will look at is the purline. The purline is used to offer support to the lower section of the roof. Similar to the wall plate, the purline is jointed into the rafters using a bird's mouth. Having the rafters resting or lying on the purline ensures that when the purline is supported by the struts, the rafters have a solid support and strength is added to the roof. The final area of support we will now look at are the struts. Struts are supports fixed from the purline to a load bearing wall. Again, similar to the ceiling joist, it's important that these struts are resting on or to an internal load-bearing wall, where possible, so to disperse the load evenly, adding strength to the roof. Where possible, a lap joint is commonly used to secure the struts to the purline. For this roof, with living accommodation in the attic space, vertical struts are going to individual load-bearing walls where possible. Diagonal struts are then dispersing the load of the roof to these walls, also ensuring equal spreading of the roof's weight. This adds strength and stability to the finished roof. Lateral bracing is used to further strengthen the roof. Struts positioned at an angle back to the load-bearing wall add strength to the roof. 
This creates a triangulation support feature which helps displace the compression and tension forces that are placed on the roof. Let's now look at how all these individual components come together to make the skeleton of the roof. The following images show clearly each detail. Can you identify each component and their function now? That concludes this video of the individual components that make up the skeleton of a traditional cut roof. Follow the Construction Hub channel for the next video focusing on the finishing detail of this traditional cut roof section.